Hey guys, Brad from West Bendino here in the Willwood booth at the 2023 PRI show. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about calipers and some of the new stuff and, and new upgraded stuff that Willwood has on the market. Caleb, you want to talk a little bit about some of the Willwood calipers that you guys have? Yeah, so this is kind of going over a lot of our bolt-on replacement options that we have, which are some easy direct mount options for a lot of the different vehicles out there. So to start off right over here, we have our D11 Kelsey Hayes calipers. So this is going to be a new system that we've come out with for a lot of the early Mustangs and Fords. It's pretty much is the direct bolt-on replacement for those early first-gen muscle car applications. So the customer that has an existing caliper, this will bolt right in place of their stock caliper. Exactly, and that's one of the things that even I've gone through with my father's own personal car is we bought replacement re-sleeve Kelsey Hayes calipers that all of a sudden leak on us another year down the road. And to be able to get a good set of replacements that is made in America, bolts right on, awesome. you know, works with all the stock hydraulics, takes a factory pad plate as well. Uh, it's a huge upgrade to be able to do. Another option that we're also looking at for a different market is our DPHA. So this is a super popular caliper that we've done throughout the years. DPHA stands for Dynapro Honda Acura. Okay. So it's pretty much going to be our bolt-on four-piston replacement caliper okay. for all the 1032 diameter rotors, I believe, for the 90s through early 2000s and all Hondas. All these calipers, you have different brake pads available from street to race to all different types of compounds? Yeah, so we'll offers about 10 different pad compounds. So everybody thinks, oh, I got a brake pad, but what are, what's it gonna be doing with them? They think, sure. oh, I want the race pad. And it's really about catering it towards what the customer is gonna be doing it at the end of the day. Okay. Um, so yeah, Wilwood has our standard street pads, BP10s and all that come in a majority of our systems. I run my uh, the BP20s on a majority of my cars. So that's like my Mustang, that's supercharged, full suspension, sticky tire that I drive back and forth to work, but I also beat on the canyons and go to the autocross sure. with. Uh, then we also have elevated pads from there, depending on if you're circle track racing, road course, off-road dedicated, you know. Uh, drag racing as well? Drag racing as well. You know, we have plenty of guys that are doing 200 plus mile an hour passes on our system. Sure. So, okay. uh, yeah, plenty of options to be able to set them up, whether it's for the pro street style systems, you know, running uh, 10s, 11, 12s, into the 9s, 7s, low 6 second passes, into the 5s, you know. We have all those different pad options, depending on if it's a lightweight uh, rear engine dragster application or if it's full steel body door car. Sure. Okay. But so. something that you guys probably didn't know is West Bend Dino does carry a line of UTV parts on their website. Caleb, can you talk a little bit about the UTV line of calipers that you guys handle? Yeah, 100%. So Willwood's actually come out with a full lineup of UTV brake kits for the Polaris four lug applications, the Can-Ams, the Honda Talons, and we're reaching out to more of the others like the Yamahas soon, uh, and the Kawasaki's as well. Uh, but yeah, we're also gonna be coming out with the Pro-R uh, systems for the five lug applications and the Can-Am six lugs in the near future. Okay. And you uh, said you're going from how many pist piston system to a six piston? Yeah, so Willwood is offering a full brake kit and this is one of our UTV calipers that we designed specifically for that market. So a lot of the times you go and you'll see others out there taking a caliper and using it in a different application. This is a caliper that Willwood specifically designed to mount up with wide mount centers for easy bracketry for all those different UTVs. So we're going here from, on a lot of systems, either a factory single piston floating, a two piston, or on some of the turbo cars, they have a factory floating three piston caliper. We're going over to a fixed mount six piston caliper with a W-clip top pad retention design. And the big thing with this right here is when you go to a fixed mount caliper, you have a lot less compliance in that system. Instead of the piston trying to push out to touch the rotor and pull the entire caliper back, that leads to a softer, longer pedal sensation. When you go to a fixed mount caliper, you're really just generating pressure. There's not much movement. So that transmits into a higher, more uh, stiffer, pedal. stiffer, more performance-oriented pedal feel. That gives you that confidence to be able to lay into that system off. Another thing that we're also doing is we're increasing the pad volume a lot. So on a lot of these applications, when you go and look at the pads, we're going from about a uh, 200 to 300 percent increase in pad volume, which is going to be able to take more heat, dissipate more energy, and it's not last necessarily a lot surface longer. area, but volume to volume to dissipate yeah. the heat. Okay. That's one thing that's actually a kind of a, a misconception in the brake industry is everybody's like, oh, a bigger Bigger's pad better. has more surface area. Where really you could have a large caliper like our D8 right here that would say have four inches of piston area, but we may have a D11 right here that has 4.8 inches of piston area. 
this caliber technically has more clamping force, so it may stop better once, whereas this larger caliber has a bigger pad, so it's going to be able to take that heat energy and dissipate it a longer period of time. Sure. Okay. Now, there's other factors that you play it, take into it, whereas this has more clamping force, but it sits on a smaller rotor, so therefore it has less leverage. When we go to a bigger rotor, we can put a little bit less clamping force on because we have more of a leverage torque arm on Makes these. Sense. Okay. And did you yeah, that's where the engineers do their magic. Sure. And we do have a super system. light series over there that's being upgraded or, or made into a different style caliper or yeah, something? Yeah, exactly. So we can kind of go through the progression throughout the years a little bit. So this is our tab mount super light, a very popular caliper option for a lot of off-road racing, uh, streetcar applications, circle track type systems and all. It's a tab mount, three and a half inch mount center and has a multitude of rotor thicknesses that we work with, as well as different piston size options. So the step up from this caliper over the years was moving from a tab mounted design over to a radial mounted caliper. So as you can tell, both very similar body shapes take the same brake pad in those systems, but by going to a radial mount caliper, we've moved our mount height further up towards the caliper body. That increases stiffness in the system and reduces flex. Okay. So that's the first step. This super light caliper, we've been making that at Willwood for about 45 years, you know, and constantly updated again from a cast to a forge to where it had spacers between to where there's no spacers in the body. Now we have the radial mount calipers. As you can see, we have our upgraded thermlock pistons in here, which is a dual shell design to be able to prevent more heat transfer okay. into the fluid into the caliper body. The next step up from the super light, as you see, we do a four piston and a six piston version of that super light. But the new upgrade one that we just came out with is actually our XR caliper. So this is going to be a bolt-on replacement caliper for all your super lights. It's a new lightweight pocketed scallop design, a lot more stiffer. As you can see, we imp uh, implemented a X bridge over the top, which helps increase that body rigidity. Now, did you guys actually lose some weight with this design or is it? Is it is yeah, so this caliper is actually a half a pound lighter than oh, the Superlight, is. Okay. which is actually already a very light caliper at around three pounds or so, depending on which rotor thickness you're working with. Okay. But yeah, this is going to be a very nice new caliper with an asymmetric body design to be able to go and increase that rigidity. And is yeah. that something that would bolt in place if I had a super light series on a car and I could bolt that right in place with the same brackets? Exactly. That That's what's awesome is the mount centers, offsets, and everything are the exact same. So if you have one of these older systems, you could literally bolt this directly nice. on it. Okay. We have a lot of customers that have the existing super lights, so that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that XR is a is a very, it, it's an awesome caliber to be able to work with. We've upgraded a lot of our circle track race application guys to it, moving a lot more of our short course Pro 2 type system using vehicles over there. So again, a very versatile caliper that we're able to use in a lot of different markets. Awesome. Um, and just like what I was saying with the UTV stuff, it's this brand new caliper that now I'm seeing all these other markets that may be able to work into. You know? sure. So as you can see right here, these are some of the calipers we were just talking about. This is that new XRZ that we're running. This is going to be kind of mocked up on a short course off-road type system that we're looking at to be able to run right now, just as a kind of a display with a T-nut hat floating rotor system. Here's going to be those UTV kits. So like I was talking to you about before over there, we've gone over to a floating hat rotor design. And what this is, the purpose of this is there's a lot of hub deflection when you're going through the chop in one of those UTVs out sure. in the desert. So to be able to take up that compliance from the wheels moving around, we've floated the rotor to be able to allow it to remain true in the caliper body. Because it's something that you see even with road course application vehicles on old pin style spindles is what we call piston knockback. And that's basically flex in the pin and the suspension causing the rotor to push the pads back into the caliper. Now by being able to go and float it, allows us to allow that rotor to A, remain true in the center of the caliper, but it also allows it to grow and contract at a very even rate without any copying or working okay. operations. So yeah, we do the UTV calipers and our race systems in a hard anodized finish with a solid uh, solid rotor surface. Otherwise, we are going to be offering a uh, system with a lighter weight drilled rotor option uh, for some of your play car type stuff on the weekends, as well as in a black, red, or the 
hard anti -stick. Okay. With, with the drill, lighter surface, is there any other benefit to that? So the main thing with the, the, the drilling the holes is going to be a lighter weight rotor. On this one right here, it's actually a little interesting because by drilling the holes in this rotor, you're actually increasing the surface area on this rotor by 4%, um, but you're also decreasing the mass of the rotor itself. Sure. So it's one of those where if I'm setting surface up Surface area for heat to dissipate versus not the pad, but for, okay. Exactly. And there's something to say on both sides of it. We want mass in the rotors because your rotor is your radiator for the brake system. But we also need vanes on rotors and those things to be able to help cool it more efficiently. Um, when I'm setting up a lot of our race applications, I'm sticking with the plain faced rotor because again, it just has that little bit extra mass in that system that I'd sure. rather be able to take. And we did see too, when we were running, we have a shop car we used to run in the Optima series a bit. Mm -hmm. We would see cracking on the cross drilled ones where they were drilled. Yeah. And those are mainly going to be on uh, cast rotors. When you're looking at the steel rotor like this, these rotors take an incredible amount of heat in the beach. You'll see them expand and contract, and you really don't see cracking on, on steel rotors. When you're working at a uh, cast rotor, one of the reasons why you're going to see it, if you notice, these are all out of our performance race systems right here. We're not running a drilled rotor on these kits. We mainly run drilled rotors on street performance setups, and the reason being, was back in the 60s and 70s, brake pads used to have asbestos in them. And, so and when the pads would heat up, the gases. they would get degassed, and the only way to get rid of that was to drill holes in your rotor. Nowadays, we still drill rotors for more of an aesthetic upgrade on the street, yeah. but it's not a performance option sure. at all. So that's where I figured that out when we were running the road course. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I want as much integrity in that rotor as you can. And one of the reasons why you actually see cracking on those rotors is because, again, it's expanding and contracting, trying to be able to you know, keep that structure form. If you always notice on the front face of most rotors, it'll the hole will be chamfered. It'll actually be curved. Sure. And that's to be able to prevent any stress riser points in those things. Makes sense. Okay. But I have a question for you. How do you, if you drill a rotor from the front face, how do you chamfer the inside of the hole from the vein? You tell me. You can't. <laughs> so that's kind of the thing why it's not really necessarily on drill rotors that we see them cracking from the face out. It's normally because of the hard stress riser point on the inside vein of the rotor. Okay. That causes it to crack. So, again, drill rotors not necessarily the most ideal thing for road course or performance application yeah. driving. They look pretty sweet, um, but it's one of those where you have to choose what your application is that you're going to be going for. Okay. Thanks, Caleb. Hey, Brad. Thanks for stopping by, man. Great to see you.